So welcome back everybody. Our next presentation uh, is a panel discussion called Musical Moments of Wonder, chaired by Patty Seaton. Additional presenters include Michelle Wistison, Derek Demeter, and Mike Smale. So Patty, take it away. All right. Oh good, the closed caption should be working too. All right, well, what we did was when we were originally thinking we were gonna do this in Edmonton, we put out anyone who was interested in doing something along these topics. And you're gonna see as we progress from my talk to Michelle's, to Mike's, to Derek's, that we have a wide variety of different ways that we try to bring music in different ways. So from, I'm gonna start out the presentation. And first of all, this is me. I work primarily with younger students in our school district. So mainly the younger students from age five up through age 12. And my general audiences, I tend to try to gear towards families. So for right now, for my presentation, I want you to pretend that you are five years old, maybe six years old, and please play along with me. I know I'm not gonna be able to hear you or see you, but I'm going to trust that you are participating. So here we go. All right. What we're looking at here is a Northern hemisphere autumn sky in the early evening. And we're going to look for a shape so I'm gonna give you a moment to look for a shape in the sky. And I want you to connect one, two, three, four stars together. And what shape do you have? Excellent, either a diamond or a square. Now, we'd like to find another shape that's easier found in a Northern Hemisphere winter sky. And here in our planetarium, we can go there but our planetarium doesn't want to move and change the sky unless we sing a song about the stars. So does anyone know a song about the stars? I hope you're typing in the chat, twinkle, twinkle, little star. So please sing with me and we're going to change the sky. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Up above the world so high, like a diamond in the sky. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. All right, friends, now we're in a Northern Hemisphere winter evening sky. Can you find another shape? Connect the bright stars. We've got one, two, three. And what shape does that make? I hope you're typing in the chat. Triangle. So we have a triangle here. And what I'd like to do is I want to expand our view a little bit. And this is that same triangle, but now we can see more of the sky. So now if you had a chance to make your snowflake ahead of time, I want you to take a moment, look at your snowflake and see how many points does your snowflake have. If it is done correctly, it should have yeah, I can't see you. So I'm going to assume that you've got it right. It should be six. So notice in our Northern Hemisphere winter sky, we can connect one, two, three, four, five, six stars together and make a snowflake. Now, I have had a chance to talk to some friends from countries that said that they don't know about snowflakes. So let's all give them an experience about snowflakes right now. So everyone get your snowflakes out. And get ready to dance with me. And we're gonna make it snow. Here we go.
know that you're sorry that we're not dancing and snowing anymore. But yes, I literally have handed out snowflakes and we have danced in the planetarium to that very piece of music that I have included in our presentation. So I'm gonna now turn it over to Michelle. Thanks for being five and six years old with me. I hope you were dancing. <laughs> And hopefully it's loading. Okay. I'm Michelle Wistison. I'm the retired director of the Casper Planetarium. I retired June 30th after being there for 24 years. And during that time, I tried very hard to get different groups to come into the planetarium and perform music, but they find it a little bit difficult. So um, I did happen to meet with one very uh, young director of a, the Casper Youth Symphony symphony orchestra and she was very interested in bringing her youth in and um, they did do one performance in our Casper Planetarium and they did it free of charge. They were primarily looking for people to just be exposed to what they did and to do a fundraiser for our local food bank. Some of the things that we experienced in doing this was that performing in a planetarium can be challenging. It's a challenge for the performers to space them out so that they can each play their own instruments. It was a bit of a challenge for the conductor to find a place to stand and still not block um, the visitors from seeing what was going on and uh, positioning the audience so that they could appreciate everything that was going on. Lighting was a little bit of a challenge. It was a challenge for the performers to see their music and the conductor, for the conductor to be able to lead the musicians. She eventually uh, hit on using a glow stick to lead the music with and with lighting we didn't want to have too much lighting because we wanted to put something up on the dome. We used our programmable cove lights to uh, convey a mood for each of the songs that they played and then we did put a few images up on the dome. It was a bit of a challenge but in the end you can have a very magical experience by bringing a musical group into the planetarium. Thank you. And Derek, I believe you're going to now be next. Oh, okay. I didn't realize. I thought, I believe I, that was Mike's mail was uh, the next one. And then it was me last. So I didn't know you were. He was, but apparently Mike has frozen out. So hopefully he'll be. Oh, okay. All right. No problem. All right. Well, I'll get the slideshow ready here. All right. Okay. So uh, anyways, all right, let me go ahead and uh, get to my part. So we're a little bit different in that we, um, not, ah, ah, come on. All right, hold on. Sorry about that. <laughs> Just trying to get, there we go. All right. Okay, so uh, we were a little different in the sense that our, being that our dome, our planetarium located in uh, Sanford, Florida at the Emma Bueller Planetarium at Summer State College, um, we have a 30 foot or nine and a half meter dome. So we're a very small planetarium. So we weren't really truly able to present a large musical uh, experience in the dome, but uh, we work a lot with our different departments on, on campus. And we decided we wanted to do a really, really cool um, uh, kind of experience. Uh, we're located near Disney World and at Disney World at Epcot, which is one of the theme parks there, they do usually around Christmas time, they do this thing called the Candlelight Processional. And it basically incorporates choral music, uh, orchestra music and narration. And we um, wanted to come up with a very similar experience but in the realm of astronomy. So we came up with this idea called Sounds of the Universe. And we uh, aligned with our concert chorale or the choir that, at, at the college and also the symphonic band. Uh, we didn't have a full orchestra, but we had you know, pretty much a, a, you know, a brass and uh, horns and, and percussion, things like that. So we wanted to work together with them to put on this really interesting event. So here I am and um, introducing kind of everybody to the experience. Uh, so again, what we have here is we have this 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 com combination between mm -hmm. choral music, 
band music and uh, live narration. Again, kind of emulating that candlelight processional that occurs at Disney World every year. And so what we what we had here is, of course, I began the, the introduction, and uh, you probably recognize this uh, person right here, Mike McConville, who worked with me at the Planetarium back when we did this in 2008. Um, he was our narrator, and he also created the script, very, very awesome script, a very poetic, very um, beautiful script that talked about kind of the origins of the universe, the, the cultural experiences of our understanding of the universe to obviously the scientific exploration of the solar system. So again, we had uh, the symphonic band uh, perform various different pieces, including several uh, suites from Holst the Planets. We had Mars, Jupiter, uh, we had, um, I believe, Pluto, we had a few others in there. Um, and uh, they, they performed those and it was a lot of fun because we also got to incorporate also choral music to that as well. I'll talk about some of the choral pieces that we incorporated. We also incorporated tech, um, visuals. So we had pictures, we had text uh, that showed the narration of what they were seeing on the central screen. And then we had text on the outside screen. Uh, these visuals were done using our full dome, uh, you know, Uniview, which we were using at the time. We also used just normal uh, high resolution imagery from NASA and other space organizations. Um, so we have done, again, Mars, we did Jupiter, we talked about the Galilean moons of Jupiter. Um, we actually, um, our choral director at the college uh, arranged a kind of this, this pops uh, suite of various music like Rocket Man, El uh, Elton John's um, Rocket Man, uh, Fly Me to the Moon, um, and uh, Is There Life on Mars, and, and, and all this really cool stuff. And at the very end of the program, we kind of ended it where we came back to Earth and, and gave people this perspective that, you know, we're on planet Earth. Um, you know, this is the best place we have in the universe. And that was also arranged by a student. Uh, he actually took Duran Duran's This is Planet Earth um, and actually arranged it for the choir and the symphonic band to play it, which was actually really, really, really cool to, to see done. So we incorporated a chance for the students to create their own music or arrange their own music. Uh, we got to work with different uh people are on campus. So it was a lot of fun and a very interesting, unique experience, which we hope to, to do again in the future. All right. Thanks, Derek, for covering for my computer, which decided to spontaneously combust uh, right during the sing-along. So that was, that was fun and exciting. Uh, let me go ahead and I think my singing scares your computer. It's, it's distinctly possible, you know. It's... <laughs> All right. So again, my name is Mike Smale. I'm the Director of Theaters and Digital Experience uh, at the Adler Planetarium in Chicago. And I'm going to talk about two examples of live musical performances that we hosted uh, or plan to host in our dome within the last year. The first one of those... was a uh, musical performance called Sphere. Sphere is the brainchild of uh, Los Angeles by way of Germany composer Robert Koch and German filmmaker Mikhail Legoff. And it combines a driving electronic soundtrack with stunning space inspired visuals and is in my humble opinion, uh, one of if not the highest quality full dome musical experiences currently on the market. Now to do a little better uh, a little better job explaining uh, what this is to you. I'm going to show you a uh, show you a trailer uh, a little bit later on, but depending on your level of interest and available funds, there are basically two options to present Sphere, either as a pre-recorded show or as a live performance. Now we at the Adler opted to have Robert come into our dome for two live performances last November, and this was incorporated into our Adler After Dark. That's our 21 and up adult night series. Setup for the live event is fairly, uh, fairly simple. He brings a small synthesizer, a laptop, and a mixer that only requires a stereo input to the house sound system. Robert then performs music live over the top of a backing track for the entire 45 minute show, along with the visuals on the dome. Now, as this was part of a larger event, guests had already paid uh, $20 just to get into the museum. Uh, despite that, they, we still sold out both shows, which is just under 400 tickets. Uh, and each of those tickets was an additional $10 add-on. It's wildly popular with some guests having traveled from several states away for the chance to see it. 
And here's a short trailer just to give you a little bit of an idea of the types of visuals and audio that go with the show. So again, that's Sphere. Uh, thank you to Dario Tiveron from Full Dome Database for hosting that uh, trailer on your YouTube channel and on your website. The second thing I wanted to talk about was uh, an event that we've been working on for almost two years with Grammy Award nominated Chicago musicians, the Spectral Quartet, related to their new piece, Enigma. Now, the quartet uh, hired Icelandic composer Anna Thorvald's daughter to create a half hour work for string quartet. That's two violins, a viola, and a cello. And then they also contracted uh, visual artist Sigurdur Gudjonsson to create full dome visuals to pair with it. Now, Siggy was new to full dome, so we worked with him to help him learn the ins and outs of the medium, what works, what doesn't. Uh, for example, one early, uh, earlier version of the visuals involved a lot of very fine grains of like sand swirling around the dome. And when we brought him into our theater and showed it to him, he saw that a lot of the smaller details can sometimes get lost. So the visuals end up being a contrast in scale, depicting microscopic images of rocks and similar structures that when projected across, in our case, the 70 foot dome of our Granger Sky Theater, those microscopic images become huge enveloping worlds to explore. But the technical setup for this live uh, music, musical performance was uh, still pretty easy. Uh, each instrument had its own microphone, which passed into a small mixer and processor and then run into our house system. We hosted an in-theater rehearsal and donor preview last October, which was the quartet's first chance to see the visuals on the dome. That's where this image was taken. Unfortunately, our planned public premiere was in June of 2020, uh, and it has been since delayed by the COVID-19 pandemic. But we look forward to being able to safely host that event at some point in the future. And I saw that Harold Williams had his hand raised earlier. Harold, did you have a question? For us, it looks like other things have been happening. Oh, good. Go ahead, Harold. Oh, uh, my video, I can't, it, I've got it turned on, but it, it's been muted, not muted, unvideoed. That's all. Unable to start okay. a video. All right. I, if you want, you can ask verbally if you'd like. Oh, no, I always appreciate what Patty does. She's also next county over. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you. Good to see you on here, Harold. <laughs> All right, do we, I guess it's time for us to move on, I guess, but if anyone has questions, we're available and I believe all of our contact information is already in the um, text that accompanies this on the web, IPS website. Yeah, we have about less than one minute for questions, but we will, I see some questions popping up in the chat now and we can, uh, those of us who presented will head over to the chat, answer those questions uh, as well. And make sure to play with snowflakes. <laughs> Always. Thanks, Patty. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. That was fun. <laughs>